Okay, let's move on to the cost model side. So I'll provide a high-level overview about the Maestro cost model. First, let me show you the source code structure. So most of the files are under the cost model slash include folder. The base folder includes some base class definitions and tools includes some helper classes such as output file generation and so on. And user API has the API classes, which are the code level APIs. And the data flow specification language has the directive syntax definitions and parser and so on. Abstract hardware model has hardware performance and cost models. Data flow analysis includes the data reuse analysis engine. Cost analysis, analysis has the, com com the computation engine of, of the cost using the data reuse analysis results. And finally, the design space exploration. So this folder name will be renamed and this folder uh, contains the base hardware cost information. And this is a high level overview of the cost model. So as inputs, so users will provide, provide the hardware parameters and data flow and mapping and target model. And in the cost model, we have uh, those um, components here. So if you take a look at the blue squares, so it has several analysis engines like data mapping iteration pattern analysis, pattern occurrence analysis, and mapping analysis. And using those information, the cost model performs the data movement and staging analysis. And based on these results, uh, it analyzes the data we use, performance, buffer, and not. So let's take a look at the data mapping iteration pattern analysis first. So this is an example uh, mapping. And uh, on the right side, I have the com computation space to visualize the, this mapping. So let's assume that we have uh, three PEs. Then the first PE we will uh, have these, co these computations and corresponding data. So because this is a COM1D operation, the, the loop iterator uh, is exactly the same as the data indices, so you, you can regard those as the data indices as well. So in this in this diagram, so P0 will have these three partial sums, and this, to compute these partial sums, we need to access uh, weight 0 and up 0, 1, 2. And because we have three PEs, and based on this mapping description, uh, we are mapping partial sums in this way, and each of the PE uh, accesses the corresponding data. And this is the initial mapping. So that's why I'm calling init uh, state for the filter and input and output. So this is the initial mapping position. And based on this mapping description, the mapping will move on to the right side, as shown in uh, the diagram on the right side. So in this case, the weight value assigned to each PE didn't change. However, the output and input activation assigned to each PE has updated. And these they are in the middle of the entire iteration, so that's why the state is called steady state. And the steady state continues until it reaches the end of the uh, entire the data space and computation space of along this dimension, so x prime dimension which is output. And when we reach the end of the out, out, end of the output, then we move on to the weight dimension. In this case, weight weight is not the the initial value an, anymore. So weight assignments are updated to three, four, five from zero, one, two. So currently, the filter weight is in steady state. However, we move we moved back to output zero, one, two. And, for, and also the inputs to the initial position. So that's why the input and output activations are in initial position. So there are three iteration status. So in initial position, steady position, and edge position. So edge position refers to the end of the iteration. And if the, the mapping has some out of range uh, element here, 
then we we will not process the out of out of the range element, and then we will have a less number of partial sums to compute com compared to the initial or uh, the steady state. So this is a common example. So we treated the in indices as just the the just like the, the number of data points, but in the high, higher dimensional cases such as COM two D. Uh, the analysis is per per dimension, and we use the the coupling relationship of the data dimensions to each tensors to identify which tensor changes for each iteration patterns. Let's move on to the next analysis engine, so pattern occurrence analysis. So it's, this is the same example. So I I highlighted the initial position for filter and steady position for input and output. So we can immediately know uh, there it this this status occurs twice. But how do we compute that? We can easily compute that using the uh, the layer dimension and mapping size and offset. So actually this need to be a map yeah in this case the mapping size and offset is the same so it doesn't matter. So if we divide the dimension size 9 by 3, which is the mapping size in output dimension, then we get 3, but we need to exclude the, the initial case, then we get, get 2. So we can easily compute this pattern occurs twice. So this is to this is not to repeat the same computation over of of again over and over. So that we we by this by this mean uh, we are avoiding the full simulation. And the last one is mapping analysis. So for mapping analysis, so this is just a reminder about the convention. So uh, for com two D operation, I will use this convention. So K and C are input and output channel. Y and X are input height and width, and R and S represent filter height and width and n represent batch and they have uh, they are coupled with each tensor so output at, for example the filter weight tensor is coupled with the output channel input channel filter row and filter column so keeping those coupling relationship in mind let's take a look at this example mapping so now we want to know how many weight pixels or weight data points do we have on each PE based on this mapping. Then what you need to do is just investigating the mapping sizes for the coupled dimensions for filter weight. In this table, as you can see, the filter weight is coupled with K, C, R, and S dimensions. So what we need to do is just mul multiply the mapping size of all of them. So this is exactly the same as the getting the volume of some uh, uh, 3D object, the cube. The so weight tensor is four, four dimensional tensor. So we they have uh, KCRN, KCRNS uh, dimensions. So what we are doing is we are getting the sub volume of the entire filter tensor, uh, which is the tiles, uh, the filter tile. And similarly, um, we can we can compute the the mapping volume, which is the uh, tile size of each tensor in this way. So what you need to do is just multiply the mapping size of the coupled data dimensions. Then we want to also know uh, when a map mapped volume moves, which means we move on to the uh, next computation tile. Then do we have data overlap over time, that means the data we use. And if that exists, how many? That means how much data we use do we have? And how many over time? And how many across PEs at the same time? So the master cost model computes those in an analytical way. Uh, this is just a I the iCatch slide, so I will not go into all the details about this one, but Basically, it analyzes the number of unique and reused pixels or data points in each data class, data tensor, 
for each mapping iteration pattern. And using those informations, information, uh, it, the cost model performs data movement and staging analysis. So I will not go into all the details because it is uh, huge. Uh, it, it, it is not possible to uh, present all the details uh, within a limited time, but I will provide some intuition for the rest of the cost model. So iteration pattern analysis provides the information regarding the which tensor changes uh, between uh, two consecutive mappings and uh, how many times in each case is repeated uh, and we just multiply that to avoid the full simulation. And mapping analysis provides information regarding uh, how many data points are mapped for each PE overall and if a tensor changes how many data points are reused and uh, need to be fetched from the glo uh, globe upper or upper memory hierarchy. So combining those information, we can extract the amount of data to be transferred from global part to PRA, amount of computation to be done in each mapping or each computation tile, and so on. So for the details, uh, please take a look at the source code and the web page. So this is the end of the uh, high-level overview of the cost model. Thank you.